What's happening in the goddamn world? Today is January 10th. My name is Reagan. Here are your past week's headlines. We began the week with fires erupting at the South African Parliament building and Israeli jets hitting militant targets in Gaza after rocket fire. Kids as young as 12 can get the booster in America. And also, where 900,000 to a million COVID cases are reported a day. And then, again, a new daily record. But still, even cases and deaths are actually much higher globally. Hospitals are slammed with the highest numbers ever, and one in four ICU beds has COVID. Biden then proceeded to plead with people to take the vaccine. But we're making improvements. In the last two weeks, we've stood up federal testing sites all over the country. We're adding more each and every day. And his strategy is more testing. Oh, now you say that. The Dow rose 50 points in the new year of 2022, and S&P was up 27% for the year. And I couldn't even buy in and hold a penny of it. Most U.S. citizens are locked out. They found a bunch of gold and diamonds and rare shit on the comet. So they're going to let it hit the planet to make a bunch of rich people even more disgustingly rich. And any shares you get from your grandpa's inheritance doesn't add up to much. The president of Bra Brazil, Bolsonaro, who got elected somehow, is at the hospital again. He was stabbed in 2018 as, at a presidential rally and has been having complications with his intestinal tract since then. Heavy snow on the east and west coasts, and the New York Attorney General subpoenas Trump Jr. and Ivanka in a civil case. Trump got a subpoena himself. And at the same time, Iran's leader announced they will now vow revenge if Trump isn't put on trial for squad wiping Soleimani and his entire gang. NASA's chief scientist quits, says he has plans to terraform Mars. I think he wants to inject a whole shit ton of CO2 in their atmosphere. What? But from how and where, I didn't go into much details. Winter storms halt travel all over the country, pileups on major interstate highways, many people stuck for dozens of hours waiting for rescue. And at the same time, Earth reaches its closest point to the sun for the year. Across the ocean, seven Chilean police officers were stung and taken to the hospital after attempting to arrest protesting beekeepers and remove their honeycombs. The beekeepers were calling for government reform to improve honey prices or provide subsidies to producers. Quick break, check out this turnstile murder or death by the turnstile. I don't know. Sounds like a cool name. Fuck it. Fuck it. A man suffered a broken neck and died while attempting to jump over a subway turnstile. Surveillance video shows a man New York City police have identified as Christopher De La Cruz trying to pull himself over a turnstile in a Queens, New York subway station. De La Cruz is seen wearing a dark hoodie and a backpack. He makes several attempts to get over the revolving entrance and drops his phone on the other side in the process. De La Cruz appears to stumble backward before trying again. He manages to pull himself up, but What a way to go out if you don't prefer the climate collapse. Russia, China, Britain, US, and France say no one can win nuclear war. In a rare joint statement, the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council said it was their primary responsibility to avoid war between nuclear states. And this past week, CES 2022 went on, and what we learned was Hyundai wants us to sit in pods and lose our minds to the metaverse, basically. To meet very specific needs. Imagine traveling in your personal mobility cabin from the airport to your home. The pod is attached to the mother shuttle for the most of the journey. But for the rest of the mile to your home, the pod is detached and goes... And then there was a new corona variant identified in France, later called the corona flu. B.1.640.2 was discovered in a traveler returning from Cameroon and is even more mutations than Omicron. And the first Florona, Florona case actually occurred in Israel. A dog saved the life of an injured hiker by laying on top of him and keeping him warm for 13 hours. Kazakhstan went into a state of emergency over gas prices doubling overnight and Russia sent in paratroopers. Shit's all fucked up. 
Then there was a deadly fire in Philadelphia that killed a fat wad of people. Some row house with 26 people in it. It just ripped through the house. Four smoke detectors weren't even working. One of the most tragic days in Philadelphia's history. That's how the mayor's describing the fire that claimed 13 lives, seven of them children. The fire was extinguished and it was a ter it was terrible. Uh, most, uh, I've been around for 30, 35 years now, and this is probably one of the worst fires I've ever been to. A new study finds developmental differences for children born during the pandemic. In fact, it happened to babies during wartime, too. Stress fucks you up and your spawn. I mean, fetus. They observe declines in fine motor skills, gross motor skills, and social development, which worsened six months of age in the child. Feds might raise interest rates, and up goes the cost of everything, with inflation being at its highest levels in years. Checking you're still there. You're still well? Schools closed for two days in Chicago because the teachers' union said no to in-person classes. North Korea fired a ballistic missile just as the South opened up a new railway. railway. They hope to connect with them someday. Guess that's a hard pass. In the one year anniversary of the January 6th insurrection, Biden said tr Trump spun a web of lies in a fiery speech at the Capitol. Italy implemented a COVID mandate for 50 years old and older. Otherwise, you get suspended from working. Austria has it past 14. And the big news this week and why I'm wearing the shirt is the James Webb locked its secondary mirror into place next its primary mirror. Again, another record set, 9.5 million COVID cases in seven, day, seven days, certainly an undercount. An Arctic blast and snowstorms drops over the Northeast and New, Jer and New Jersey is in a state of emergency again. Severe weather crippling the country from coast to coast. This is just terrible. In the Pacific Northwest, record rain and snow melt turned roads into rivers. The rising water swallowing homes and stranding drivers who needed to be rescued. Extreme flooding in western Washington shut down a 20-mile stretch of I-5. In Seattle, a landslide pushed a home off its foundation with a man still inside. Freezing rain threatens the nation's midsection before heading east. This is terrible. I'm, I can't even feel my fingers. It's numb. Chicago, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. Thousands were without power in Virginia. Shit's all fucked up. Biden traveled to Colorado to see the wildfires, although Build Back Better plan is still stuck in Congress. All three psychos who uh, killed Ahmaud Arbery got life in prison. And the last one got a possibility of parole, if that's even a thing. The National Guard was called in to help overwhelmed New Jersey nursing homes because we don't give a shit about our old people. And we don't pay caregivers nearly enough to do their jobs. And some Gen Z kids got stuck in Cancun after partying on a plane maskless. And Trudeau didn't like that, okay? At least it's quiet in my apartment. My loud neighbors moved out, so I'm able to actually vlog in peace. Ten earthquakes near Columbia and South Carolina, some aftershocks for a week. Usually they get about 20 earthquakes a year. And James Webb fully unfurled on Saturday. So yay, we actually get to peer back into the universe before we all collapse together. Some homo sapiens saved a sea lion. And now we know it's the future because you could sit in a cylindrical display made by LG and go whoop-de-whoop. And people are literally killing other people on the streets of Kazakhstan. Welcome to 2022. This has been your weekly update. My name is Reagan. Please hit like and subscribe. Also, donations are gladly accepted. I'm going to new uncharted territory with this channel and going to need some encouragement and support along the way if you like to have independent journalism. Namaste.